Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Happy Friday. Hey, we're coming at you with a double header right here. Like like Ernie Banks used to say, let's play two. 2019 Bowman's Best Baseball, 16 boxes, two eight cases, two eight box cases. Random team break number one from jazbeescasebreaks.com. A very big thank you to everyone here for giving this a shot. Appreciate it. I don't know why Jeff has a thing next to his name. Did he win this spot somewhere? Confused about that, but that's how it was in the list. No A's, so there, we only sold 29 spots. And we'll randomize everybody's names and put them into the spreadsheet right here. After six times, two and a four, six times. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Two and a four, six times. After six times, Dino down to Matt Gomes. Two and a four, six times for the teams. Good luck, teams. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After six times, we've got the Cubbies down to the Rangers. Hi, Trends. Uh, too late for that, I'm afraid. I think this doubleheader will take us past the time we have available for that football mix. We'll have to wait for that tomorrow, but be happy to have you buy at all those spots tomorrow. Dino, Cubs, Mark with the Indians, Jordan with the Tigers, Sean with the Angels, Kyle Hoover, you have the Brew Crew, John with the Cardinals, Hans with the Giants, Cody with the Reds, Patrick with the Rays, Randy with the Nationals, Mark, you have the Braves. David with the Diamondbacks, Juan, you have the Royals, Sean, last spot, Mojo, Red Sox, Dino with the Pirates, Tyler with the O's, Jeff with the Mariners, Tyler with the Twins, John with the Marlins, Cody with the Blue Jays, Stephen Kendrick, you got my Dodgers, Richard, you have the White Sox, Ian with the Yankees, Hans with the Rockies, John with the Padres, Chris Parent with the Phillies, Cody with the Mets, Rod with the Strohs, and Matt Gomes with the Rangers. Now, trades are allowed. Trade at your own risk, of course. Let's sort by column B. By team. Sean has the Red Sox up for trade. I'm going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to pop open these two cases right here that I have on my desk. Should be a lot of fun. Love the Bowman's best. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. There was a flurry of trade chatter, and we have two separate deals that got done. First deal that got done, let's expand the font a little bit here. Uh, Yankees for Tigers traded. Jordan, that's Randy in the chat, now has the Yankees. We'll put a T next to there for trade. So if you're following along at home, you know who, uh, who potentially draws first blood in that trade. Now, one trade is kind of rare. Two trades in the same break. Dodgers and Cardinals switched up. Now, John has the Dodgers. We'll put a lowercase t next to there for the second trade. And Stephen Kendrick now is in the Cardinals spot. Right there. So there you go. Both trades confirmed in the chat. The... 30 people watching the stream right now uh, are my witnesses. All right. Let's print. Let's rip. Good luck, every Two cases of the good stuff. Nice double header. Thanks, everyone, for giving this a shot. Really appreciate it. All right. So there's one case there, one case right over here. We're going to slide this second case off to the side right over here. I think on the knit cam above my head. You should see it right over here. There you go. You can see it right there. Let's pop this open. Let's see what we got. All right, so there's two. Four, six, eight. Series one silver pack posters. We will have those if you're if you want to come visit the shop. 
in Hermosa Beach. We are now open 11 to 8. We're closed now. If you visit, you won't be able to get in. But we're open 11 a.m. tomorrow if you're around, Saturday. 11 to 8. I think, I think we're open for the next two weeks except for Christmas and New Year's. I, guess, I suppose Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, we, we probably will have abbreviated hours, but keep an eye out on our Twitter, at Jaspi's Breaks for that. But we'll be open the rest of the time if you're looking for last minute stocking stuffers and, or want to buy a nice hobby box for yourself. We've got a lot of stuff on, this, on the site. All right. Good luck, everyone. Here we go. Four autographs, a box. Two autographs for a mini box. That is pretty nice. 32 autographs total and a short checklist. So we are going to, over two cases, we're definitely going to see a lot of repeats and stuff like that. But the flip side of that is that a lot of times we see a lot of color for those repeats. So it's a good chance to not only chase the player you're chasing, but also try to chase some color for that particular player or team as well. Where's my official printout here? There it is. All right, so there you go. Sean with Last Bot Mojo Red Sox. And you see the T's for trade next to those teams right there. I don't know why Jeff has those symbols next to his name, but there you go. <laughs> and here we go. Good luck. Box one of 16. Actually, where do I have a... So what time is it right now? All right, so actually... Okay. So there's the schedule in the chat. This should probably take us to 30 minutes past the hour. There's Aaron Judge, 250. We'll top load all of those later. Just in the interest of time, we're gonna breeze through these quickly. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have time for the mixers or the uh, optic, um, the uh, optic bait or optic baseball. Optic, it's been a long day. Optic football, full caser. So all of that will be pushed till tomorrow. But we probably should have some time for, uh, we probably should have time for Origins Basketball if you want to fill that by the end of this break. If it fills by the end of this break, we'll make it happen. John Means Atomic, Tatis Jr., we'll set some of those aside too. And Matt Walner for the Twins, that'll be for Tyler Stumpf. Tyler with the Twins. Tyler's been having a pretty good Bowen's best day, I want to say. It's funny you should mention that, Logan. I saw, I saw, I think it was baseball. I saw a couple in the back. I don't know when, I don't know when those are going to be revealed or how they're going to be sold, but I guess we just got those today. I didn't see them yesterday. Shervin with the Mets. Shervin Newton going to Cody Passmore in the Metropolitans. Let's say rookie Eloys as well. Love those die cuts. Looks like the autograph is right there. And behind Austin Riley is Riley Green. Nice one for the Tigers. That'll be for Ian, who got the Tigers in a trade. There you go, nice. That was that Yankees Tigers trade. Which we had confirmed a little bit earlier. All right, so maybe we can balance it out for the Yankees. There's Neophyte Vlad Guerrero. 
and Justin Verlander right there. All right, so Ian draws first blood in that trade. Next box. Half price? No, Logan won't. Yeah, it'll be half price. Half the case, as well. We can worry. We can arrange that. All right, box two of sixteen. Also, I realized, Logan, for that previous break, you were talking about you thought there would be more autos in there. I thought you said I read it as more hits. I did too. So correct me if I'm wrong, Jason Weissman, this ba basketball playing kid at Memphis, took money from Penny Hardaway when he was in high school, but then gets punished for it in college, gets suspended a bunch of games, and then he just says, F it, I'm out for the rest of the year, and I'm just going to go to the NBA? Why, why doesn't the NCAA want star power in their... It's very confusing to me. All right, Pete Alonzo... And Dodgers, Cody Hosey, John, drawing first blood in the trade, getting the Dodgers' late first-round pick. Tulane University, I believe, pretty good hitter. Maybe future Justin Turner or trade bait, who knows. There's Mookie Betts, awesome maybe for him. Mookie Betts to 150. And like I said, we'll sleeve and top load all those before they get shipped out. There's Vlad Guerrero, 50 out of 50. Hey, yeah, good for him. I mean, I, I'm just, and another Riley Green, 24 out of 99 power producers autograph for Ian. So far, so good for Ian in this trade, but plenty of boxes to go to balance it out for Jordan. I think that's a top 10 pick, number five pick. There you go. But yeah, good for, good for Jason Wiseman. I mean, I'm fine with that. I have no problem with him going declaring for the NBA. Um, but I guess I'm more confused as why the NCAA, you know, with so many kids just going one and done, why they wouldn't try to hold as much star power as possible for, you know, and not punish him like that. But Cody with the Reds. Nice one, Cody. Great Hunter Green. His auto hasn't changed for years. Hopefully it stays consistent like this. Dedicated to his autograph. Greg Kirby for the Mariners. That's going to be for Jeff and Seattle. I think next year, next year that rule is gone, right? Glaber Torres to 250, or in a couple years, or something like that, that rule is gone. Now kids can just declare whenever, whenever they want to, straight out of high school if they want. All right, next spot. There will be an autograph recap, of course, at the end of this break, at the end of the video if you're watching the replay. Um, oh, Patrick saying, you think he got hit harder with the suspension because it's... Oh, because Memphis... So Memphis kept paying him? Or kept playing him after... That's right. I remember something about that. I don't watch too much college sports. But I think I heard something about that. He was ruled ineligible, but Memphis kept playing him as they, I guess, disputed the, the ruling or whatever. And so there was more punishments and then... Weissman eventually said, nah, forget it. All 
Alright, next box. How high do you think he? I mean, he's a he's he's like what? Was he the number one high school prospect or something crazy like that? Or like, like maybe a top top one of the top prospects, I would say. From what I remember, where do you think he goes in the NBA? I know it's a baseball break, folks. But we've got a lot of boxes, so we'll talk about a lot of different things. Um, how high does he go in the NBA draft without playing for a year? Top three pick, Edward and Patrick are saying? Wow. Even without him playing, it doesn't hurt his drafts. I guess that's why he's leaving. <laughs> All right, that makes sense. There's Zach Thompson. I guess if people that are in the know, right, who know more about this draft stuff than us, if they're saying, hey, you're probably going to be a top five, top three pick, then he's like, all right, well, screw it. It's not going to hurt my draft status. All right, that goes to the Cardinals, and that's Stephen Kendrick with the Cardinals. So that trade, kind of even so far, I think. Adley Rushman to 250, die cut. Save some Senzels as well. And we've got Nick Lodolo. This is just, these fall one per case. 44 out of 50 franchise favorites. Nick Lodolo autograph for the Reds. What up, Joe P? What's next? What do you want to be next? That's up to you, not up to me. I did hear that. Yeah, crazy that the youngest Lonzo Lonzo ball, the youngest ball of the Lonzo family, could go number one. Ninety-seven out of ninety-nine, Tyler O'Neill. What's going on, Joe P? How's 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 Christmas shaping up out there? Right, Kyrie didn't play. I guess he was fine as well. Ton, another Cardinal for Stephen K. Seth Beer die cut. Bo Bichette, Atomic die cut. These aren't numbered, but they, they look pretty cool. Luis Gill for the Yankees. So Jordan with the Yankees. And we got Alec Manoa, 3 out of 99 for the Blue Jays. Cody, Justice Sheffield, Atomic. Okay. Next box. How is, is it LaMelo Ball? Is that the youngest? He's in Australia, how's he doing in Australia? What's the, what's the update on him? I feel like some basketball drafts in recent years, at least from a hobby perspective, have been a little soft at times, but I feel like last year's draft class proved to be a little bit deeper than we thought, and there seems to be more players in their second year now still playing at a, at a good level, which I think is good for the hobby. And I think this current year's draft class is good for the hobby. It's, just, it's a lot deeper than you think. I mean, obviously Zion gets all the hype, but but uh, but I think it's deeper than we think. And so if we're talking about the next NBA draft, we might have a few, three or four good years. I mean, obviously some of them aren't gonna work out, not everyone's gonna work out, but the more players that are interesting, you know, and then obviously some of them are gonna watch out, but it's good to have a bigger pool of players. 
So that's a good. That, I, I, I'm like I'm liking what I'm hearing here. So Edward saying that ball in Australia has been doing great in the games he's played, and the scouts are raving about it. There's Riley Green and Kaboom, Carter Kaboom. 45 out of 150 for Randy Ramos and the Nationals. We got Davey Garcia. Yankees. That's going to be for Jordan. So that trade starting to balance out there. Tigers Yankees trade. Oh, Red Max Scherzer to 10. 6 out of 10. Hunter Green die cut. Tatis Jr. will save one of these two. One or more of those could be gradable. There's Keston Hira, John McCall with the Padres, and Corbin Carroll. Joe P., you're a Diamondbacks guy. If you're still listening, Corbin Carroll, what, what, give us a nice little sentence on, on what, what we can expect from him. That'll go to David. David and the Diamondbacks. There's die cut right there, another key boom. And for the Pirates, Mitch Keller. Dino with the Buckos. There you go. Pete Alonzo, rookie. Pedro Martinez and Will Smith. Really nice, Joe P says. Good kid, excellent, good. There you go, David. That's that's straight from a, a Diamondbacks fan right there. So they seem they seem high on him. <laughs> well, I, I don't need I don't need him to Edward. I don't need Joe P to break down, you know, all of his tools, grade him on the, but the 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 40 through 70 scouting scale or whatever. And now if Joe Peace was just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Guy sucks. You know, he kicks, kicks, kicked my puppy the other day. Then I'd be like, oh. Don't like that, but. How do you, oh, Joe, how do you feel about that? I don't think we've talked about this. How do you feel about the Madison Bumgarner edition? Are we liking this? Should the are, are the Dodgers quaking in their in their boots? We've been very comfortable in those NL West boots. We've we've worn them in really nicely. We've broken them in really nicely. up the Diamondbacks depth chart here. Joe P loves it. Oh, they did update the depth chart too. Good job, Melon B. All right, so what, what do we got here? Where else do we need, where else do you guys need to improve, Joe P? That's a good, that's not a bad rule. Madison Bumgarner and Robbie Ray is pretty good. 
Yeah, yeah, the Baumgartner should fill, just should fill in. It gives your team a little bit of an attitude too, Joe. Baumgartner over Granky, but yeah, Baumgartner will fill in those Granky stats pretty well. There's Corbin Carroll again, kind of a little guy, Joe P says, but he's got some pop. Outfielder, really like Kettle Marte. Kettle Marte, man. Carried my fantasy team for a good chunk of the season. You think Robbie Ray gets traded? I, I guess so. Rowdy Tellez for the Blue Jays. Cody Passmore, 49 out of 50 on that one. Nice. Robbie Ray traded. I feel like the last, at least just from seeing Bowman draft and whatnot, I feel like there's been some prospects for the uh, for the Diamondbacks working their way up the ranks. There's Andrew Vaughn for the White Sox at 250. All right, I don't know. Well, things are things are have to happen. I like Kettle Marte. That's pretty. That's pretty solid. I like him right there. Madison Bummer are a good pickup. You know, I just got to piece out the rest of the team and see what happens. No, Joe, you don't think the Padres are ever going to turn the corner? They've got too many prospects not to turn a corner. I think they're still a couple of years away. There's Will Wilson for the Angels. That goes to Sean and his halos. I don't know. That, 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 that starting pitching staff is no bueno. Edward, so that that's going to be a big reason why why the Padres will will not really get anywhere. Francisco Mejia, I think, has to really show his top prospect status. You know, obviously Tatis is incredible. I think Machado is great. That's a, that's a bold signing for them. I feel like they gave up on Luis Urias a little too early, but Eric Hosmer, I think, is still solid at first. I really like Manny Margot. I think that kid is not even drinking age. And he's got an interesting ceiling. You know? Could be could be power C power and speed. Who knows? Will Wilson, Hunter Bishop? No. Brendan Rogers for the Rockies. That will be for Hans in Colorado. I think Tommy Pham was not a bad deal. Will Myers still has something left in the tank, right? Right? Kirby Yates is a great closer. You just have to work on the bullpen and just revamp the starting pitching unless unless Chris Paddock kind of... Wait, they have Garrett Richards? Was that the deal last year where they were like, we'll give you two years, Garrett Richards? But split the money over... But it was paid like it was one year or something like that. It was kind of weird. Because they knew that he was going to be out for last year. And if, if I mean, if they can get a 100% prime, healthy Garrett Richards back, it'd be pretty cool. But I mean, I don't know. Zach Davies doesn't scare me. Danielson Lament, not yet anyway. Lucchese's pretty strong. It's either too much youth or just not good enough. I like Lucchese, though. Cal Quantrill, I guess. Remember Paul Quantrill? Cal Quantrill. This kid is on, on the Padres. Yeah, I think I think the I think the Padres are a are a, a, a couple a two or three years away from really really threatening. Rebel saying, wish the Royals had Haas back. I don't know why the Royals, I guess the Royals were, let's go flip to the Royals really quick. I think the Royals were just really, I don't know. I think it was smart for the Royals to just kind of, kind of just 
not linger, not hold on too long to all the all the players. You know what I mean? That way they can just make the rebuild as quick as possible, or as they possibly can, and get some good draft picks in return. How many teams do we see just, you know, make bad moves or pay people and just to be kind of middle of the pack? And that kind of, that no man's land is the worst for a team. Like, you kind of paid a few guys big money, got a couple superstars, but not enough farms, not enough draft, you know, and draft capital, and then that kind of gets someone nowhere. There's Michael Toglia. But yeah, that Roy, that World Series Royal team was really good. Michael Toglia for the Rockies. That goes to Hans. There's Dodgers catching prospect, or I guess not anymore. 13 out of 25, Will Smith. I don't know what my Dodgers are doing, ladies and gentlemen. I guess they're just trying to wait. I mean, Dodgers are in a weird spot. Like, everyone wants them to make a move, but they don't have to make a move. But they know they got to make a move, so they got to make the right move and not just any move. That makes it tricky. But they know that I think they know they have to make a move. They got to shake things up on that team. There's Nick Lodolo. That's for the Reds. That's going to go to Cody. Reds. I feel like the Reds are starting to... Kind of like what the Reds are doing. They're making moves. I feel like the Reds are making moves like... Like they want to contend this season. There's Chris Path. We were just talking about him. There's J.J. Blede to 150, Tatis Jr. die cut. And a nice Keston Hira rookie autograph for the Brewers. Kyle. Kyle Hoover with the Brew Crew. Next, bo two boxes left in this case, and we got one more case to go. Dodgers in on the hater rumors? They should be. But I don't know. Dodgers are so adverse to giving up prospects. I feel like the Dodgers think they could, that they can develop a Josh Hader, you know, or draft a Josh Hader. Can't give up too much for relief pitching, I think. But I think they would move a top prospect for maybe a Francisco Lindor or a Mookie Betts. I think they'd be more in on that, and then just try to just try to piece together a bullpen. But the Reds act—they'd be acting like they're they're contenders. They got Aquino out there. Senzel is great. I mean, Jesse Winker still has a bit of a ceiling, right? Mustak is at second base, according to MLB. You got Joey Votto still has some stuff left in the tank. Now, look at this. Luis Castillo is a great starting pitcher. Trevor Bauer, pretty solid. Sonny Gray is pitching like the pitcher he was back in Oakland. I think he's reunited with his Vanderbilt pitching coach. And then they just added Wade Miley at the back end of that rotation. They still have Desclafani in the mix as well. Luis Castillo, Trevor Bauer, Sonny Gray. That's not a bad front three. And then you got Iglesias as a closer. I don't know what their middle relief is like. Maybe that's something they need to work on, but... You know, Eugenio Suarez at third base. You know, you got a couple Dodgers there too. Some Kyle Farmer who can move around a little bit. So, 
a breakout season or two from some of the youngsters. Some strong starting pitching. And an NL Central that's going to beat up on each other. I think that's going to be really interesting. Tyler wishes your Mariners would pretend they want to be contenders. I feel like the Mariners are always making moves, Tyler, but what's, what is, what's going on here? What are we doing here? I like Mitch Hanniger. I wish the Dodgers had D. Gordon back. There's Nico Herner. For the Cubbies, that's for Dino and the Cubs. Uh, the 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 terrible rebuild word. I don't know. Well, I feel like the Mariners have some have a decent farm system, right? They've got some people coming up the ranks. That guy, Kalanick. But yeah, yeah. Tyler's like, but we, I feel like they've they've been saying rebuild since two thousand two. Braden Shoemake. Yeah, Mariners like to get rid of the best players every year and always seems like they trade them to the Yankees. Yeah. But I, I like... The Mariners, yeah, are, seem to be a little... seem to be confusing to me. Like, like they have money. Like, I, I don't think they really fall into that... I don't think they really fall into that small market team kind of situation because they, they've they spent like big teams. There's Josh James. I mean, they, they gave Cano a lot of money, you know? So, so it's not like they're scared to, you know, they got money, but they, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. Here's Riley Green to 150. Right, and at the time, I think the, I don't think, I remember at the time, it was more probably one of the biggest contracts at that time, but I don't think people really thought that that was, I think more people were surprised that he went to the Mariners as a free agent, to be blunt. There's Greg Jones, 64 and 99, but yeah. Mariners have a good pitch. That's a great city. They can splash some cash. Yeah, Corey's brother got paid. They just need to put it. They just, I don't know, maybe it's just bad drafting. Just the rest of the team not being pieced together. Probably, I guess Kyle Seeger got injured too. Greg Jones for the Rays. That'll be for uh, Patrick. I don't know. I mean, they got presence in the international market, but that. You know, he had a rough season. He's got good stuff, but had a rough season. I don't know. What's going on with the Mariners, Tyler? Yeah. I, I feel like if I feel like if it wasn't for the I feel like if it wasn't for the Seahawks being you know, having Russell Wilson and a you know, and a and, and having a pretty pretty perennially good team. I feel like it would just be it would just be just real sad times in Seattle if the Seahawks weren't good. Unless you're not a Seahawks fan, I guess. Then I suppose for those people it'd be tough. That's right, yeah, Sounders winning, cha winning titles. The Mariners have been Seattle Storm, WMB Chance, and Seattle Mariners just sitting around, kicking rocks. They got to do something. What's going on with that? What about what's the GM situation there? They got to maybe they got to shake things up in the front office. Yeah, the front office gonna be like, all right, let's 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 get to let's do something here. Let's do something. Jerry DePoto? No. Oh. 
I feel like Jerry Depoto is regarded as a pretty decent GM, no? What's the, I mean, I feel like there's just like no, I mean, maybe, maybe just, maybe the MLB media just hasn't covered it as deeply, but from being a West Coaster, I just feel like I don't hear about the Mariners and the, and like Jerry Depoto being out front and being in, you know, getting interviewed on MLB Network and putting himself out there and saying, hey, Mariners fans, we got a plan. We got these young guys. We're adding these guys. We're going to do this, you know. I don't, I don't feel like I hear a, a good a, or a clear sort of narrative on what they're trying to do. This is Greg Jones again for the Rays, this time just a base auto. What's <laughs> up, Rex? Yeah, Re uh, you got to put a dash there, Rex. They're, they don't want to resign. Griffey, A Rod, and Nitro. There's Chris Bryant to 50. Eloy Jimenez die cut. And we've got Quinn Priester. Well, we got to do something. The die cut. Save those Eloys. And we got Victor Victor Mesa. That'll be for John McCall, who got randomized the Marlins in this doubleheader. And the last auto here is Bryson Stott out of 150 for the Phillies. Is that right, Sean? I just know Sean's comment. Mariners is one of the four MLB teams to not go to the class even once during the decade. Who, uh, who are the other three teams in? Out of 99, Trey Turner. And one more case to go. Here is the second case. Ryan's guessing Padres, Reds, Tigers? No, ti Tigers were in early 2010s, weren't they? I thought they were in the plasma. Else then, maybe not. Rex saying Cubs haven't done anything big yet in the offseason, signing Brandon Morrow. Well, you guys sent Brandon Morrow to the minors? Well, I feel like teams like the Cubs, Rex, my Dodgers are in there too. I think their market, I think their market is going to be in the trade market. Not sure if any of the any of those there's certain crop of teams that I think weren't really in on any of the uh, big free agent names. I think their assets are such that they may do better trading. Yeah, Tyler's saying Astros. Remember how? Remember the Astros 
were so bad that they that, that no one that they just switched into the AL West. Maybe Miami. Oh, you just looked, Ryan. Miami. Oh, so you got one of them. Miami, Padres, and the White Sox. Gotcha. Right, that makes sense. Can they the Padres? I guess not. White Sox, I thought they did, but... All right, box nine of 16 in our double header, ladies and gentlemen. I think this break might actually bring us. I'm might bring us to the end of the night. Well, nothing's really selling out. So yeah, I think this might be our last break of the night, folks. Sorry about that. Just running running on empty right now, so not going as as quickly here. Will Wilson for the Halos. That's going to go to Sean. So what what are what are you hearing around Chicago, Rex? What's uh, or from Chicago media out in the Midwest? So like, what are you hearing about Chris Bryant? Where is he gonna go? Are how serious are the Cubs about moving Chris Bryant? There's Greg Jones, Rays. That'll be for Patrick. What about, I mean, I think, Rex, you mentioned that the Cubs were not in, intending to to uh, extend Anthony Rizzo, so does that mean he's on the trade market? I'm sure they'd love to unload Jason Hayward's contract, right? Ooh, Rolando Hernandez. Die cut autograph, future foundations die cut auto, 61 out of 150. That's pretty sweet. That's another nice one for Patrick. Got randomized Tampa Bay. Move that stadium, Tampa Bay. Move it to move it to the easier to get to part of town. There's Hunjin Rue to 25. Tatis Jr. Die cut. Ah, two biggest teams were Phillies and Braves. There's Victor Victor Mesa speaking of Miami. That goes to John. Phillies and Braves. Yes, Rebel. And they're on the but they're both on the Marlins, they're brothers. There's a Victor Victor Mesa and a Victor Mesa Jr. If I'm not mistaken, Victor Victor is the more highly touted of the two. So if you have fantasy baseball drafts coming up in a couple months or so, <laughs> that include that include the drafting of minor league teams or minor league ball players, and adding to a dynasty format or whatever you might have, just be sure to know the distinction. No, they're not messing around. Not an error.
so you gotta hit coach with a smoothie instead of the Gatorade. <laughs> Saturday on ABC, the ESPN app, we got three more bowl games. All Corn State taking on. You got Ryan O'Hearn, Royals. Royals rookie going to Juan. This is Shervin Newton, C.J. Abrams. We'll see if we can find some more info on them when we see both of those cards revel. Oh, Hunter Bishop. Giants sneaking up on me. That'll be for Hans and the San Francisco Baseball Giants. I did hear those Schorber rumors. Kyle Schorber, right? Yeah, Schorber to the Yankees. There's Mike Trout to 250. Tatis Jr. And Nate Lowe. 5 out of 10. Nice low number for the Rays. Patrick. Rays having a decent break here. Patrick. Hi, Brett. How's it going? Brand, that's Brandon Lau. Nate Lowe, Brandon Lau. There's a difference. 54 out of 99. That's what they say. That's what There's Eloy him and his die cut. Vlad Guerrero Jr. Corbin Carroll, David. A few Corbin Carrolls in this doubleheader break, David. Brandon Neisner. And next box. All right. Rebel is going to get on this on the Royals, but it's like there are very few people. Well, all the checklists actually have not, not as much as we usually expect to see but usually you price them accordingly then and Ryan Ryan saying six breaks this week and seems like each time I'm on the wrong team well uh, yeah come on this case listen all for your team all it takes is one Richard You think Epstein's a little nervous about letting go of Brian and Rizzo because of the fans? If that's the case, I would fire that GM right away. If you're a general manager, you don't care about fans. You care about how to make the team better. But, hey, listen, if Theo Epstein's gonna, gonna move Chris Bryant, then just move Rizzo, just, just blow it up. And at that point, yeah, <laughs> Brewers you could use a man on first. All right, Quinn Priester for the Pirates. And there's Keone Cavaco. That is for the Twins. That's going to go to Tyler. And what will the Brew Crew, Brett, give up for Anthony Rizzo? What about a... Uh, 
What about a Josh Hader and a Keston Hira? Probably not both. What about a Josh Hader? Plus something else. There's Michael Chavis, rookie autograph. Red Sox, Sean with the Red Sox. Last spot, Mojo tried to trade, couldn't trade Mojo. I don't think it'd be, I don't think it'd be Hader Rizzo straight up. Let's look at the Brewers depth chart. There's Blood A to 250, Seth Beer die cut. There is Brandon Malone. Brandon Malone going to David and the Diamondbacks. Next box. Next box. I'm looking at the Cubs roster now too. If if they move Rizzo, when's Rizzo's contract up? That might be an issue too. I mean, if I'm Theo, I'm just like, all right, send us Keston and we'll do it. Keston and Lorenzo Kane for Anthony Rizzo and we'll do it. You put Kane in center field. You put Keston at second. You can find a place for Nico to play. Maybe move Ian Hap to third, and then you move Brian to. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think the Brewer should do that. But. I don't think the Brewer should do that. But I feel like that's what the Cubs would ask. And I think Bruce would be like, click, no thanks. See, at that point, Kane Hader for Rizzo, then at that point, I think they might, Cubs might just say, click, no thanks. There's TJ Sikima, or Sikima, for the Yankees. That'll be for Jordan. Got the Yankees in the trade. Future Foundations die cut. So there's Victor Mesa Jr. Rebel. Not Victor Victor. Just regular Victor Mesa. And for the O's and Tyler, that's Dean Kramer. 
50 out of 150. Kramer versus Kramer. Vlad Guerrero Jr., rookie card, green to 99. Die cut. I know, we're just talking about you, Keston. I don't know what the I don't know what the cut your Cubs are gonna do, Rex. There's Seth Beer, Astros. That will be for Rod, who got randomized the Astros in this one. Yeah, you got Rurder, Rowan Gardner coming up. Amaya is in the mix. I say get rid of everyone except for Javier Baez. Redo that pitching staff too. Get all those guys out of there too. Just blow it up, Rex. Just keep, just keep Ian Happ, Javier Baez, Nico Herner. Right, that's it. Get rid of everybody else. Start over. And we got Andrew Neisner. That's for the Cardinals. That'll be for Steven Kendrick. Got the Cardinals in a trade. All right, four more boxes to go in this double header. I don't know if I'm going to make it, folks. Trade Darvish back to LA? Yeah, if you eat his contract. Sure. We'll send you a couple guys and eat, eat Darvish's contract. Done. Nick Lodolo, Reds, Cody Passmore. Big prospect for the Red Legs. Who I think are trying to act like, act, they're acting like contenders. They, I think they feel like they can get somewhere. They kind of signaled that when they traded for Trevor Bauer, which is interesting. Now there's Victor Victor Mesa. Keston Hira. And... We got Rowdy Rowdy Tellez. Blue. 37 out of 150 for Cody and the Blue Jays. Back to back Cody Passmores. Rizzo and Brian Telly for Verdugo and Bellinger. I don't think that's going to happen. If there is. I'll bet, I'll bet everybody on the team is probably tradable except for Cody Ballinger. There's Michael Toglia. 
I'll bet every all 39 other men on that 49 roster would be traded first before Cody Bellinger, I think. Unless, like, the Angels called and offered Mike Trout for some silly reason, which they will never do. Oh, look, Kevin Biggio. Rookie auto for the Blue uh, Blue Jays. Not Blue Crew. Blue, I almost said Blue Crew. It's a combination of, I guess, Dodgers are, they're the Blue Crew, I guess. Not a Brew Crew. This is a Blue Jay. Kevin Biggio. That's, this could be the next big thing in baseball for the Blue Birds. That's going to be for Cody. Eloy to 150, die cut. I don't know if the Dodgers want Rizzo because they're good at first base. I think they're content with Max Muncy being at third or at, at first base a lot. Maybe shifting Cody Bellinger down to first every once in a while they're okay with. I think they, uh... Hmm. I think they do... I think they do Bryant, though, for Verdugo and someone else. I mean, if I'm the Cubs, I would ask for, here's Chris Bryant, give me Verdugo and Dustin May, or Verdugo and Gavin Lux, All right? So Verdugo gets, gets a guy in the outfield for you, Gavin Lux addresses a, addresses a second base issue. Not an issue, but could address second base, middle infield, right? You can shift Nico Herner somewhere else. Or Dustin May adds a future guy for the rotation. Yes, yeah, some die cuts could be autoed, Adam. We've seen a couple in all the cases we've done. We've seen a couple. I think the Dodgers would be more interested in Chris Bryant. If they can put Chris Bryant on third. They can move Justin Turner over to first if they want to. He's getting a little bit older, battling some injuries the last year or two, you know, on and off. So maybe first base would be a little less, a little less crazy for, for him. Get the younger Chris Bryant out there at third. Like a... Guarantee the Dodgers go after Mookie. They are going after Mookie. I can guarantee that too. And I guarantee you they're going after this guy too. And I guarantee you they're going after Chris Bryant. Whether they get them or not is the question though. Alec Manoa, whether they build the package and are willing to give up the prospects that they would need to give up to make that happen. The Dodgers have been very, very reluctant to give up on any of their highly touted prospects. Here's Christian Yelich at 250. There's Quentin Priester, franchise favorites, 45 out of 250. That is a case hit. That falls one per case, those franchise favorites. That'll be for the Pirates. That goes to Dino Bates. You think Mookie's already gone? It's a done deal? It's just a matter of what team? So what is it, what is it going to take? Adam, what's it, what's it going to take to pry Mo old Mookie bets? Are they just going to wait as long as possible for the best package? I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of teams can just wait and they'd be like, all right. Either, either another team can overpay or we all just wait until he hits free agency and then we just open our checkbooks. Nice J.J. Blit A. John McCall. Part of the Marlins rebuild right here. Could be a big name for the fish. Conor McGregor didn't do anything inside the octagon in 2019. He's still UFC's biggest 
saying that he was notorious mostly for negative headlines. There's a Victor Victor Mesa atomic die cut. And Brandon Malone, David. January 18th to take on nine out of ninety nine with the Diamondbacks. You're saying one good player, one top prospect, and another prospect. So who would those players be if that team happened to be the Dodgers? I have a feeling there's nice Pete Alonzo to 150 for the Mets. That's for Cody. I have a feeling that the that the Red Sox are asking the Dodgers for both Gavin Lux and Dustin May. And I think that's a hard pass for the Dodgers. I don't think they're going to do it. I'd be extremely surprised if they did. I don't think they should do that. One of those guys plus others? Sure. But I think the Red Sox, at least the sort of speculation, I mean, it's all speculation, right? Who knows? But I think the speculation has been there. Those are the two players that have been asked about, and the Dodgers have kind of said, ah, all right, well, good luck. We'll talk to you later. Good luck with your trade. Hope we can do business again in the future. Red Sox are in kind of a tricky position because they, they, I mean, they've declared that they want to get under the payroll. They've lost or under the luxury tax, which killed a lot of their leverage in any negotiations that they were trying to do to keep Mookie in arbitration. The year four of arbitration, I think, would co probably cost them thirty some odd million dollars. which is, I think, something that they don't want to do. A.J. Pollock, Dustin May, and Dennis Santana. Done. i do that. Cody Hosey. For my Dodgers. That goes to John, who got the Dodgers in a trade. Joey Bar, what 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 side of baseball, Mr. X? Casey Mize, die cut. That's gold, thirty-five out of fifty. Nice. And there's Keone Cavaco, six out of fifty. Oh, you're throwing a David Price too. See that 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 might get spicy. Ah, luxury tax arbitration. Well, luxury tax is easy. There's a there's a collectively like so when the union and the players association have their big meetings and they threaten to strike and all that sort of scary stuff that fans like us don't like. Um, they hammer out, hey, what's the luxury tax amount going to be? So if it's at 200 million, let's say the luxury tax is set at 200 million. If your payroll by season's end, I think, right, or playoff end, and or by season's end, I think, is over the luxury tax, then you pay a certain percentage into this big pot. And that pot of money, I think, get, then gets divided up a bunch of different ways. I think some of it actually goes to, goes to uh, smaller payroll teams or something like that. There's Dean Kramer, Orioles, Tyler Stumpf with that. Arbitration is um, is just a lengthy team control. This is what Chris Bryant is fighting with uh, with the Cubs with your Cubs right now, Rex. So so let's let's take Fernando Tatis Jr. for example. So his playing clock starts right. So for 
there are uh, two different options, I think, that Fernando Tatis has. Each year, he can renegotiate his contract for, a, a, I think, about four years. Now, the Padres, from the get-go, they could say, hey, we'll pay you seven years, $250 million right now. You know? Or Fernando Tatis Jr. could say, eh, I don't want that because I think at the end of my four years, I'm going to be so good that I can get 10, mere, 10 years, $350 million. So they say fine. So the Padres are like, whatever, we're not going to do that right now. We don't know what you're going to turn into. Right? He's probably going to be amazing. But this is a guy that you might want to lock up early. So might not be a good example. So arbitration. But, but here's the thing. Most of the time, teams aren't giving players, most rookie players aren't. You're, this is a bad example. Let's find someone else. Because <laughs> most players aren't going to be offered contracts like that, length, like long contracts. Because essentially the baseball team wants to keep you for as long as possible without paying you as mu what you're worth, right? So they go through this process of arbitration. It usually happens with players who are kind of on the fringe or maybe not getting those big contracts. So you literally go to a panel of three or four people and it's really awkward and teams don't like it because the baseball team comes up and says, well, the player comes up and says, George Kirby says, I think I deserve... You know, ten million dollars this year, or Mookie Betts will go into arbitration and say, "I think I am worth thirty-five million dollars this year in arbitration." George Kirby goes to Jeff Peace, and then the Red Sox come back and say, "Well, these are the reasons why we think he's only worth twenty-two million dollars this year." So it's really awkward, right? Because the, your team is essentially saying, "This is why you're not worth what you think you are." We think you're worth this. And then Mookie Betts and the Red Sox will will hammer it out and be like, and the arbitrator will go, the third party is the arbitrator will go, listen, guys, I think you're at about $28 million. That's pretty fair. I forget how that works. I think if you have it go all the way through the process of arbitration, whatever number the arbitrator says you have to take, which will be somewhere in the middle, or, most of the time, this is where you see in the news, so blah, 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 avoided arbitration and signed for one year, X million dollars. Which is probably what will happen with Mookie Betts, if he stays. Because I don't think they want to go through that awkward process. I think they'll eventually go, well, Mookie, how about this? We'll just, you know. That's arbitration, in a nutshell. No, no worries, Rex. I'm sure I got some things wrong, but that's, that's pretty much how it goes. So now the Chris Bryant thing, so then you start hearing about your service time clock starting. So there's a rule where, th this I forget because there's math involved. I think that there's a thing where like if you, are, you join the major league roster at X date, then that makes it go over a certain calendar. So then you have a bonus year of holding on to team player control for that year. So essentially, what happened with Chris Bryant, Rex, is that since the Cubs called him up in like May, or whatever it was, June, that extra month or month and a half or so was enough to not start his service clock so that year one of arbitration doesn't hit until another year later. Which gives the team another additional year of control before he hits free agency. Because he can't go anywhere until free agency. Until he hits free agency. So that's what he's disputing. There's Keston Hira. Which I'm sure the Brewers have to go through with this guy too. Kyle Hoover. Most of the time it's pretty amicable. You know, player, player and team kind of get it. You know... So, so a guy like him will probably go through a standard four, three or four years of arbitration and they'll, they'll come to a, a fair agreement on their yearly contract every year. And then he can either be signed to a long-term contract or he hits free agency. 
if they don't want to get to free agency, they can avoid, they can kill two years of arbitration. They say, let's forget the last two years of arbitration, Keston Hira. Let's sign a long-term deal. He might say, fine, let's do it. Correct. So they'll do this. Well, I mean, they do the same thing with Nico. They'll do it with everybody, right? Every team does it. Dodgers did it with Walker Buehler, you know. Gavin Lux, Alex Verdugo. And there's Braden Shoemake for the Braves. Mark Matheson with that one. But yeah, baseball is pretty pretty confusing with the arbitration, the luxury tax, free agency. It could get pretty. It could get pretty crazy. But uh, the thing that gets the most confusing, like they're like Rule Five drafts. There's Alec Manoa. So there's like there's another draft after the main draft where you have to protect your entire 25-man roster or 40-man roster. Or no, anyone not officially on the 40-man roster, which is different from your 25-man regular season roster. right? Anyone who's not officially on the 40-man roster can be scooped up in a Rule 5 draft. So that's wacky too. I'm not terribly sure how that exactly works. Like what players are not eligible. Maybe maybe if you're like a first round pick in your first year, you might not be eligible, but there there is like some qualifications. So they just can't snag like Nick Senzel when he was first drafted or something like that. But. All right, there's Alec Baum, die cut. Atomic and Josh James is your last autograph for the Astros. That goes to Rod Andrews in Houston. But baseball's ridiculous. I mean, I can't imagine how they keep track of all the minor league. Pay. There's two different major league contracts, minor league contracts, all that sort of thing. It require. I mean, it does require a whole team. The whole team of people do it. And there's Justin Verlander at the end. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your break. Let's do a quick autograph recap for you. I know this is kind of a long break. So this, let's go back in time to the first case. These are just an autograph recap. So a couple Greg Joneses, some Josh James. There's Nico Herner. We were talking about him. Keston, Lodolo. Will Smith, Atomic Autograph was cool. Brendan Rodgers was a bit of a surprise. There you go. Will Wilson, Rowdy Rowdy Tellez, Corbin Carroll, Mitch Keller, Corbin, Carter Keyboom, Lodolo, Case Hit, Hunter Green is nice, Riley Green, nice, Cody, Riley, Shervin, Matt, and Cal. And the case we just finished right here. Involve these guys, some Kestons. Small checklist, so yeah, we will see some of the same names. But J.J. Blade was nice. There's your case hit, Quinn Priester. Kevin Biggio was cool. Lodolo, Kneisner, Seth Beer, Dean Kramer, Michael Chavis was cool. Nate Lowe to 10, 5 out of 10. Hunter Bishop, Ryan O'Hearn, Victor Victor Mesa, we got Rolando Hernandez, Greg Jones, and Will Wilson started things off. That went to Sean and the Halos. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. A very nice doubleheader break of Bowman's Best Baseball. Random team number one. Nice, good 16 boxes here on a Friday night. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. This is Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com.